Hey everybody, it's Mr. Mott. What we're going to do is go through uh, acid-base titrations and what you need to know. Um, so first of all, um, when you're dealing with acid-base reactions, uh, when you mix an acid and base, you're going to make water and you're going to make a salt. That's known as a neutralization reaction. So first example we'll look at is HCl and NaOH. Both of those are strong. HCl, hydrochloric acid, is going to be your strong acid. Um, and then NaOH is your strong base, sodium hydroxide. You mix those two things together, you're going to make water, and you're going to make a neutral salt, NaCl. Uh, different example here would be if we switch up what our acid is. Um, HClO hypochlorous acid is a weak acid, so when we mix them together, you're still going to make water, um, but you're also going to make NaClO, um, which is going to be your conjugate base of your weak acid. That's an important thing. We'll come back to that. So let's look at a situation where we're uh, doing a, uh, a neutralization or titration with uh, sodium hydroxide and HCl, both strong. Now, uh, in these examples, this first one here, your concentration of these is the same. So one of the things that you might be asked to do is look at a graph and be able to figure out a few, a few things about that graph. Uh, so on that graph, you might uh, want to know at what pH uh, does the graph start, the shape of the curve, where is buffering occurring, where the equivalence point is, um, and at what point um, you would reach that equivalent point. In other words, how much sodium hydroxide would you need to add uh, because uh, sodium hydroxide is the titrant in this case. It would be in your burette. Uh, and then also sort of at what pH does the graph end. Okay, so if you want to take a moment, you can pause the video and then you can kind of come up with your own sketch and see how many of these points you were able to find. So this is uh, what the graph would look like. Uh, because you're mixing a strong acid and a strong base, your equivalence point would be at zero. Uh, you're going to start at a pH of one because uh, your acid, which would be in the, in the beaker or the flask, um, has, a, uh, has a concentration of 0.1, so the negative log of that for your pH is going to be 1. As I mentioned, your equivalence point is going to be at 7. That's always going to be the case when you have a strong acid and a strong base. Um, your end point, so after you titrate all the way through the end point, and you continue to add a strong base, would be around 13, which is going to be your pH of your sodium hydroxide. Um, and uh, also you'll notice that at the uh, equivalence point, 50 milliliters of sodium hydroxide has been added. And you can uh, know that because your concentrations of your acid and your base are equivalent to each other, uh, and they're both strong. So you, you could also uh, assume that the amount of sodium hydroxide used would be 50 milliliters. Uh, the other thing to note when you're mixing a strong uh, acid and strong base is that this area down towards the bottom, uh, in between sort of where we start and our equivalence point, that's going to be relatively flat compared to if we were titrating um, with a, for instance, a weak acid, for instance. All right, let's take a look at that. Let's say that we are adding sodium hydroxide, a strong base, to a weak acid. What would that look like? So something to recognize in your formula of your generic weak acid um, we would be forming uh, A minus, which is your uh, conjugate base to your weak acid. And that's an important thing. So um, this graph sort of uh, format a little bit differently, but what you're going to notice is that your endpoint um, or your equivalence point is above seven. So um, and the reason being is that because you're forming a conjugate base uh, at that. Also, another feature that you'll notice is that your starting point is higher than 1 because your pH of your weak acid uh, is going to be greater uh, than 1, even though your concentration was 0.1 molar. Uh, you'll also notice that uh, we used your concentrations, again, in this case, were the same 0.1 molar. Uh, so we would know that your equivalence point would be reached at 25 milliliters because you start out with 25 milliliters of your uh, weak acid. And, and at your equivalence point, your moles of acid and your moles of base are going to be the same. And because your concentrations are the same, your volumes will be the same in this case. Uh, in the beginning part, from zero uh, all the way to your equivalence point there, in that sort of flatter area, that's where buffering occurs. Um, 
And a couple things to note there is that halfway uh, between uh, your equivalence point and your start, in this case about 12 and a half milliliters, would, uh, that's when your pH and your pKa of your weak acid would be the same. Okay, uh, And then also uh, another uh, point there, it's a little bit harder to see compared to the previous graph, uh, is that uh, the area in the beginning of your graph is not quite as flat as it was when you had a strong base with a um, as a strong acid. With a weak acid, uh, it's more of a gradual uh, climb rather than being mostly flat. Uh, let's go back to a strong acid, strong base, but this time um, we're adding acid uh, into your base. So if you can imagine your acid is in your burette and your base is in the um, is in the flask below with your pH meter and everything like that. So if you want to, you can pause the uh, um, you can pause the video and see if you can come up with what that graph would look like, where the endpoint was, uh, what volume of hydrochloric acid you needed to reach your endpoint, all those good details. So we can see here that because again you're mixing a strong acid and strong base, um, that your equivalence point is going to be at seven. Uh, but this time your graph is flipped. Why? Because uh, in your flask uh, you have sodium hydroxide. So your starting point would be pH 13. Uh, that's the pH of your 0.1 molar uh, sodium hydroxide. Again, our equivalence point is at 7 because we're dealing with strong acid and strong base. Um, our end point is around 1 because after we titrated all the way through our equivalence point, to kind of finish our titration, we'd be adding uh, enough hydrochloric acid that at the end that's all we would have and your pH of 0.1 molar HCl is 1. Next we can take a look at uh, a graph uh, what will a graph look like if we are adding 0.1 molar uh, ammonia and H3 to 25 milliliters of 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid. So what you could think about is what would the reaction look like uh, so you got your reaction and you'd be forming NH4Cl. Uh, in this reaction I just chose to include the Cl so there's no confusion but your chloride ions would be spectators so just kind of keep that in mind. Your conjugate acid that would, you would form is NH4+. Plus. Okay, So keep in mind that we form that, uh, that conjugate acid in this case. So here's what your graph would look like. Uh, in this case we have our strong acid in the flask so our uh, pH would be uh, right around 1. Uh, and then uh, also, at what point would you reach your equivalence point? Well, uh, that would be 25 milliliters where we reach the equivalence point uh, because your, your moles of acid moles of base need to be the same, even if it's strong and weak. Because your concentrations are the same again, uh, your volume where you reach your uh, equivalence point would be the same for your acid and your base. That's why it's 25. Notice your equivalence point here is below 7, uh, and that is because you are, in your uh, neutralization, you are forming a conjugate acid in that process. So that's a really important idea. Uh, halfway between your, uh, uh, your equivalence point and where you start, in this case 12.5 milliliters, your pH would be equal to your pKa. Now, uh, kind of the reason why, if we refer to the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, your moles of A- and your moles of HA would be the same here. Um, so, your, uh, so if a log of 1 is 0, then your pH is equal to your pKa. Uh, next, we'll be flipping some things around. Um, we're going to be adding a strong acid to our weak base. So our weak base ammonia would be in our flask. So you can pause the video and see if you come up with what that graph would look like and all those details like equivalence point, volumes of your equivalence point, volume halfway to the equivalence point, and what that means. So here's what our graph would look like. Um, we're going to be starting with the weak base in the flask, so our pH is going to be above 7. Uh, to know more exactly, we probably need to know the, the, the Kb of our equation, uh, but uh, definitely would be above 7. Uh, then kind of drawing in our line of where 7 would be, our equivalence point would be below that. And again, we're forming our conjugate acid. So even though we're sort of reversed what we're adding to each other, um, your equivalence point is still lower. 
halfway to your endpoint. So our endpoint would be at 90 milliliters. So our midway would be 45 milliliters. And at that point, uh, your PKB is equal to your POH uh, by the same kind of idea, because at that midway point, um, your, uh, your base and its conjugate acid would have the same concentrations. Uh, next thing you might kind of encounter, uh, just in terms of kind of knowing what it looks like, would be a diprotic acid. And the thing you want to remember about a diprotic acid is that in that reaction, your strong base would, would, would react, and it would react to remove all of the first uh, protons in that, um, in that weak acid. So, um, so it would remove all the first, first set of protons before it removed the second one. So what you would end up with is a graph like this um, and sort of with two sort of equivalence points. You'll notice that because we're dealing with a weak acid, the maleic acid, that these changes, um, the slopes of these would be a little bit more gradual uh, compared to a strong acid. Uh, and then there would be two equivalence points. So our first equivalent points would be around 10 and our second one would be around 20. All right. Um, and if you're interested, I'm sure you can search up images. What would a triprotic acid look like? Uh, you can imagine it would just be one more uh, sort of S-shaped added on to it. You could look up uh, phosphoric acid, the titration of a strong base with phosphoric acid. I'm sure you'd find lots of images. Um, the last thing to just kind of mention is um, what kind of questions would you make? Would you see? All right, so. Here's uh, question number three from the 2015 AP exam. So they're giving you some information and in some of the uh, about uh, certain preservative added to uh, uh, soft drinks. Uh, they're giving you a Ka of the sorbic acid, um, and then they're asking a few different things. So part C is asking you the pH at the equivalence point there. Um, Part D is asking you to calculate the pH at the equivalence point. Um, and then if we look at uh, part E, um, they're asking you to draw what the shape of the curve would look like. And then also uh, mark the position of the half equivalence point uh, on the curve with an X. Uh, and you can very easily find the answers to those, but I didn't want to put them on there uh, in case you want to try them on your own. Uh, but you can look up the scoring guidelines, uh, just Google 2015 AP uh, chemistry exam scoring guidelines and it'll break it down for you. Uh, I believe, I'm sure there are videos out on uh, how your thought process going through it as well. Thanks for watching guys, hopefully this was helpful. Bye bye.